Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to tell you how to organize a remote workplace, distance learning, conferences or video meetings in Zoom. Video chats are becoming more popular because they let us not only see the people we are talking to, but also enable us to show something to them or react quickly to a situation. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. If you need to establish a video connection with a big group of people, take a look at the special video meeting tool – Zoom. This is a service for video meetings and online conferences. Anyone with a Zoom account can organize a meeting online. For free accounts, video meetings up to 40 minutes long are available. Zoom is a great tool for one-on-one -on -one and group lessons, where students can join in from computers, tablets or smartphones. If you want to join a meeting, all you need is a special link or meeting ID. Online sessions can be scheduled in advance, and you can turn them into recurring meetings, that is, lessons you will have regularly at the definite time will have the same link for anyone willing to join in. Talking of advantages, uh, this service is distinguished by a high quality of communication. You get HD video and audio contact with every participant. The organizer or host can turn microphones on and off for other participants or turn off video and request any participant to turn the video again. The share screen video can be paused. What is more, you don't necessarily have to share all of your screen, but you can choose to share a particular application only, for example, a browser. In the settings, you can enable all participants to share their screens or limit the use of this feature to the organizer only. The platform also includes a virtual whiteboard, so you can switch from the share screen to whiteboard easily. Another feature is the chat where you can send messages and attach files for all of your students, or for a particular person only. You can configure the autosave option for the chat or save the chat manually for every meeting. Just go to Chat, More, Save Chat. Also, you can record the online lessons both to your computer or to the cloud storage. It's very convenient to be able to use the order start function for recording and pause the recording if necessary. During the meeting, you can appoint another organizer or host who will have the same rights as you. Turn the student's mic on and off, rename meetings and divide them into rooms. To start using Zoom, you need to download and install it to your computer or smartphone. I will leave the links in the description below this video. When the download is over, find the installer in the Downloads folder and double-click on it to start the installation. If you are using a smartphone, tap on the Download button, and then when the process is complete, the button name will change to Open. In both cases, you will see the program's icon on the desktop, a white camera inside a blue circle. Click or tap on the icon. A window pops up with options like Join a meeting, Sign in, Sign up free. Choose Sign up free and enter your name and email address. After you sign up, an email will arrive to your mailbox to confirm your newly created account. Go to your mailbox to find the new message. As soon as you click on the button to activate your account, a new window opens where you can set your own password. 
Remember that it should contain both capital and small letters as well as digits. There will be some hints to help you. If the hints are shown in red, it means the password has to be changed until it satisfies the system. After that, you'll be suggested to invite colleagues. You may skip this step as well as another suggestion to start a test meeting. This page suggesting a new meeting will contain a 10-digit code or meeting ID. Remember it. This is your permanent ID for your personal meeting room, which will be assigned to you. In the future, you'll be able to create temporary meeting rooms or stick to your personal meeting room for all occasions. To start a meeting, run the program. In the menu, check the option to start with video or proceed without video. If you ever want to change the settings for your meeting room, click on the Gear Shaped Settings button in the upper right corner. As soon as you click to start the meeting, the meeting window and the menu will open. Look at the control panel below. You will see everyone who is taking part in this meeting and some controls to manage the meeting. The first button on the left is Mute. Use it to turn your microphone on and off. When one of the meeting participants is speaking, the unspoken rule for all other people in the, in the meeting is to mute their mics. This should be done because even if you keep silent, the sound of mouse clicking or any other noises in the room where you are during the session could be heard by other participants. The more participants in a meeting, the more background noises they may create, which certainly doesn't help to improve the quality of your communication. That is why the meeting organizer can turn your microphone on and off. Next to this button, there is an upward arrow. When you click on it, there is a menu where you can configure your mic. The second button is Stop Video. The function is similar to the mic button. You can turn your camera on and off. However, there is a difference. The organizer can turn your camera off, but they cannot turn it on again. When the organizer decides to let you join the meeting again and enable your camera, you will receive the organizer's request to turn the camera on. The third button is Share Screen. This function can be used if you are the meeting organizer or if you have the organizer's permission to do so. It lets you show the screen of your computer or gadget to other participants so that they could see a presentation, document, etc. This feature is especially useful during a brainstorm, business meeting, or distance learning. As soon as the share screen function is enabled, an additional menu appears to let you draw, add arrows, use your mouse, and more. You are free to explore all the opportunities available in this mode. The fourth option is Chat. It lets you open the chat window and post messages there during the meeting. This feature is especially useful when you are not taking an active part in the discussion and you don't share your screen, but there is a question you'd like to ask. The last button is End Meeting. Use it to leave the meeting, discussion or a learning session. If you are the organizer or the host, you can just leave the meeting room and give others some more time to talk. Or and the meeting for all. There are several ways to add participants to your meeting. You can use the contacts list and the invite button after you start the meeting. After clicking the invite button, a window like this appears. It contains options for sending the invitations. You can use email, copy URL or copy invitation. Every meeting is assigned a special number. When you signed up, you were given a permanent ID for your personal meeting room. You can use it to talk regularly to the people you know. But if you start a meeting with some people you don't know, or only for one time, the meeting room is assigned a new number every time, and this number is only valid as long as the meeting is active. This is the number sent to people in the invitation when you invite participants to a meeting, which is already in progress. 
This number doesn't need to be copied. It will be added to the invitation automatically. When you share the screen, one of the tools available for you is Annotate. Use it to draw, highlight, erase, and so on. It can be used by both the students and the teacher in a distance learning session, for example. In the settings, you can disable this function for students. Another interesting option is to share your mouse and keyboard controls to one of the participants. The disadvantage of this program is that students can only draw and they can't move things around the virtual whiteboard. However, the teacher can turn on the share screen feature and let students use the teacher's mouse, as well as the keyboard, remotely to move objects around and do all other things that may be required. As you may have noticed, this program has a good choice of functions to help you organize various forms of remote work. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!